All right, here's our second uh, video on comparing data sets. Uh, and in this one, we're going to explore uh, the idea of um, determining statistical significance. Can we figure out that two data sets, uh, that the difference in a mean value between two data sets is uh, an effect of random variation, or if it's an effect of some kind of qualitative systematic difference uh, between those two data sets. So we're going to follow a process that's very similar to what we used with outliers. We're going to determine what we think of as an acceptable variance and define that in terms of a t-score here rather than a z-score. Uh, then we're going to determine the variance between our two data sets. Uh, and then we're going to compare those two things and see whether our actual variance uh, is, indicates random variation or indicates some kind of qualitative systematic difference. So here, when we choose our t-value, uh, we want to depend a significance level. How strict do I want to be uh, about finding, determining that this can't be just random variation? So in engineering, we might say we want an alpha of 5%. And what that means is we'll accept that these two data sets are genuinely different if there's less than a 5% chance that the difference is the result of random chance. Uh, and so you can see in this image over here. So now that we know what our alpha is going to be, we're going to go with 5% or a kind of 95% confidence level. Uh, let's work through an example. So here we have uh, two measurements of ball bearings. One day we measure 16 of them and find uh, an average of 12 millimeters uh, in diameter with a standard deviation of 0.9 millimeters. Next day, we measure 25 and find some different values. Did something change with the production process? In other words, is the line producing qualitatively different ball bearings uh, that maybe we have to go and check the line and make sure things are okay? Or is this just a matter of random variation? Uh, so we start by finding uh, T acceptable, uh, just like we did with our uh, outlier process. Uh, and we use a T-score calculator to do that. But uh, our n here is going to be both groups. Um, so 16 uh, uh, data points the first day, 25 the second day, and then we're going to subtract 2, right, because we have uh, two sets here, uh, and we end up with a new or a degrees of freedom of 39. So we plug that into our calculator. Uh, to find t acceptable with a nu of 39 and a confidence level of 95, and we get a t acceptable of 2.02. .02. Okay, so that's going to be if our uh, uh, the t score, the difference between those two data sets is more than 2.02 .02, uh, standard deviations, then we'll know that those are significantly different. Okay, that they're not, it's just not, not just a matter of random variation. And what we call that is statistically significant. The difference between these groups would be statistically significant. So let's see if they are. So now we found the acceptable uh, variance, or define that acceptable variance. Now we have to find what the actual variance is. And so just like with the outliers, we're going to find how many standard deviations uh, separate our two sets. Uh, and in this case, they are two data sets, not a data set uh, and a single point. Because of that, uh, this is a little bit more complicated. One, because there are two data sets with multiple points and we're interested in how far apart the means are, uh, we're going to use standard deviation of the mean. So we want to know how many standard deviations of the mean they are apart from each other. The second point is because we have two data sets, we have two standard deviations of the mean. And so we're going to combine those in a process called quadrature. And you've seen this uh, when you've looked at uh, the Pythagorean theorem, uh, for instance, but we square uh, one number and sum it with the square of another number and take the square root. What does this do mathematically? Well, it means that our combined standard deviation will always be bigger than each of these individually, 
but it'll never be bigger than the sum of the two of them. Okay. Um, and in the ball bearing case, if we do this, we can figure out here's the standard deviation of the mean of A of my you know one day, uh, and here's the standard deviation of the mean of my second day, uh, and here's the combined standard deviation of those two, uh, two data sets. So when we calculate our variance, that's the value we're going to use. That's when we say how many standard deviations away, this is the standard deviation value that we're going to use. Now we can find the t-score that defines the difference between these two data sets. So we find the difference between the two means uh, and we divide by the combined standard deviation of the mean and that gives us a value of 2.15. So what does that mean? It means these two data sets are 2.15 standard devi deviations away from each other. Okay, just like we did with our outlier test. Uh, and then just like the outlier test, we're going to compare that actual T variance uh, to an acceptable T variance. Um, and if that variance, that actual variance is bigger than our acceptable variance, we can say, oh, this isn't just a matter of random chance, okay? This variation must mean something systematically has changed. And that's the case here, right? We have uh, 2.15 is bigger than 2.02, and that means there's only a small chance that this difference is a matter of random variation. It looks like today's batch of ball bearings is actually qualitatively different uh, than the one yesterday. So that difference again is statistically significant. The last thing we want to turn to is what's called a p-value, which you'll run into occasionally in stats. We're not going to use this a ton in this class, but I just wanted you to be aware it was out there. Um, this is an estimate of the probability uh, that a difference between two samples is due to chance. And so this is like finding a z-score and associating a probability with it. Here we find a p-value um, associated with our, or rather a probability associated with our t-value, right? So our t-value was 2.15, right? So we'd find the probability associated with t 2.15 and subtract it from one, and that will give us a p-value. So this for 2.15 is probably gonna be somewhere around 95%, uh, maybe a little bit uh, higher, 96%. Uh, and we subtract it, and we get a 0 0.04. This should be 2.15 there, uh, and we get a 0 0.04. Um, and what that says is if the tested samples are not qualitatively different, uh, there's only a 4% chance that they would turn out like this. In other words, if, this, if these two data sets are testing the actual same thing, uh, there's only 4% chance that we'd have uh, numbers that looked quite this different, okay? So a low p-value means there's a high probability uh, that those two data sets are actually different. And that's it for all these T's and P's and <laughs> P's and C's. No more letters.